Hello, it's Bini here on the 24th of Sep. I'd like to share, uh, you know, this concept about wash and rinse. You know, I've been uh, using wash and rinse and I created the whole uh, way of trading using wash and rinse, right, with uh, lots of indicators to support the identification of wash and rinse and to fine tune a wash and rinse trade in a lower time frame. Right, so today I'd like to showcase what I did for the uh, recent FOMC, which is which was uh, last uh, Wednesday uh, night, uh, which is Thursday morning for Singapore time. Right, uh, so today the date is 24th of Sep. Right, so that's um, a day after FOMC, and yesterday we I started to enter into the dollar trade. So let's take a look into you uh, the the XY here. All right. Um, during the day of the FOMC, all right. During the, the the day before the actual FOMC, all right. The dollar index had a move up. So what's dollar index is a is an index, right? That's measures into the strength of uh, USD against other currencies. Okay. So we start to see, for example, the day before uh, the FOMC, all right, and uh, price of the dollar index moved up. So that's bullish. However, if you dwell a little bit further, you realize that you know this up here is really near to some resistance level. And what happened when the cat is out of the bag? So when the cat is out of the bag, um, when the Fed right announced their plan for the tapering as well as indication of what's going to happen to the interest rate. So uh, after that uh, news came out. Um, the market trade the dollar, traded the dollar in the reverse position, right? Immediately it flipped the other side. Okay, as and as all of you will have, uh, you know, know from my lesson, right? So this is a typical wash and rinse pattern, right? So that's um really uh the wash and rinse when the cat out of the bag and then uh the professional traders will trick the other side. Okay, so this will trap a lot of. Uh, small retail traders who saw that hey look you know uh, with the meeting it's it's going to be bullish the dollar no all right because then the cat is off the back the bullish dollar has already happened um, many weeks or many days before the actual meeting already now so um, I'm just going to showcase how I traded this uh, movement yesterday all right just to update a little bit um, because uh, this is a tall dashboard Right, it measures into the our our trade signal, meaning that every four hours you will monitor through all the pads here, all right, and uh, make available the trades which are uh, available for us, right, in in at a glance, so we can see them easily, all right. So there was a sell signal for the dollar index eighteen hours ago. Uh, this means that I traded uh, the. Uh, short in dollar, the sell in dollar 18 hours ago. All right, and what did I trade? Um, I've traded into the uh, sell in uh, the long in the pound dollar. All right, so I know that it doesn't show a buy here because that signal has already happened yesterday. Uh, I can just show you my trade later on. All right, and then we traded into a sell in dollar scene. Okay, and of course, I have other trades going on, which is the pre. Um, FOMC trades and then uh, that's um, the dollar franc okay which I traded in terms of the sell in dollar franc and as well as the sell in dollar cat so let me just go through all these trades before that let's take a look at the trades I did before FOMC so I tend to want to avoid uh, trades which are um, you know dollar based before the FOMC so what I did was to, uh, based on a tall dashboard, to sell uh, Aussie franc and cat franc and that went into profit. Um, and because the FOMC was uh, on the 22nd and 23rd, right? Um, so I did the dollar yen short much earlier. So that's also gotten into profit. All right. And basically you can see I avoided um, most of the dollar pads. Okay. So I had also a... Apart from the winning trades, I also had a long wrong trades in Pow Aussie, so that was stopped out. Uh, and uh, see, so I did the Kiwi Yen Euro Kiwi, so that's in profit. Uh, I um, accidentally clicked on the wrong trade here, <laughs> right? 
yeah i you know it's happened and then i have also a reduced sizing all right of the pound dollar after the fomc meaning if you look at the trade signal i mentioned all right um the buy in pound dollar all right that happens after the fomc uh, was a uh, reduced in sizing trade currently i have this uh, trades running all right so i have the sell in dollar cat so that's um slightly before the fomc and uh the sell in sweezy and what i did was that uh, together with uh, pound dollar but after fomc i went short on dollar sing uh, again all right uh trading the cat off the back and uh so let's talk about uh, what happened before fomc and why that you know certain strategies allow us to see um a, a movement before the actual event all right, so this is the trade that I had in uh, dollar cat. You can see my dollar cat trade was put in on the twenty first of September, right? And at about price of one point two seven six four five. Okay, so where is one point two seven six five? So this is around this price here. Okay, all right, one point two seven six five. All right, now um market is forward looking it means that prior to the news all right and much earlier they would be pushing price uh to a certain direction okay according to the objective right so when you take a look at what happened to dollar cat right when this was a huge uh, push up the dollar cat was basically near to a previous high already so if you just measure in terms of the range, like um, this is a high point, let's say this is 10 and then this is 1. Um, at that point of time, just before FOMC dollar cap was near to um, the high, all right, probably in terms of the range 10 and 1, then dollar cap could be 8.5 or 9, right? Okay, so what we do is that we trade it on the uh, concept of wash and wins, all right? So that's a, a fake move. Right. So in this case here, uh, uh, at end when when the when the FOMC happened, that means at the end of the FOMC, right? So this was the day after the FOMC. In fact, that that bullishness was totally eradicated, right? It raised and then there was a huge drop. Right. So if you were to trade, let's say at the end of this bar here, you are trading right into a support, okay? Uh, so what we do is that we trade on the intraday time frame, all right, and then we trade somewhere near to this bar here, uh, or even sometimes uh, a day before the FOMC. So that's really taking a slight risk here. But um, our our with the watch and means with the tall method, the alien watch, we are able to sort of predict that uh, switch in the uh, positioning. All right, so that's give us a certain edge here. Now, um, the key thing about uh, this dashboard is that it allows me to monitor into what happens um, at every four hour or one hour interval. So I'm able to break up the trade, right? Uh, instead of the trade that uh, at the end of the day, all right, I'm able to trade that at every four hours. And the good thing is that I get alerted every four hours Right, so I don't need to be staring at my computer to know of a trade. I just need to be alerted and then go to my trade, uh, whichever that was alerted to me. Okay, so that's um dollar cat trade. Uh, if I were to take a look into what happens to pound dollar, all right. So this is a uh, pound dollar here. Uh, there was this long bullish bar, right? But then what happened uh, before or during FOMC, right? During the day of FOMC, price was being pushed down. Okay, and then it's being pushed down right into where? Right into a support. Right. So the next day it didn't carry through. That that down didn't carry through, and we know that this is a typical uh Washington's pattern. Okay. So uh and of course that with all the indicators we are able to see that Washington means very clearly. In fact, that if you want to sell prior to FOMC, then the sell signal came earlier here. Okay, so we have one sell signal here, and then we had also any another earlier sell signal. But this was the sell signal that we traded right uh, before the FOMC. So when the cat is off the back again, all right, uh, you realize that many times the market would just reverse because anyway it's no news already, 
right? So uh, we traded on the uh, flip side of that uh, counter movement. That means that instead of continuing uh, to go short, all right, we traded the uh, reverse, which is to buy. And in fact, that this trade did very well. If I would just let you know where was the entry, we entered somewhere around this bar here. Okay, so it's is really an entry that was really near to the low, right? Take a look at um, my my trade. Okay, so let's point to you. Uh, what have what? Where is the trade that? Okay, so that's the one point three six four four was the entry price. So where's one point three six four four? Right, so that's around this price here. One point three six four four. You can see it's really right at the bottom. Okay, we are able to fine tune uh, our trade right based on a day or week level. But then to enter that using the lower time frame. So far, um, before FOMC and after FOMC, I've traded a few trades here, including the pound dollar and then the mystic dollar yen trade. Uh, then the of course I skip I skip the dollar pairs on the day of the FOMC. So I went in to trade the kiwis. All right, I had one um, wrong trade here. Right, and then um, there's also the yen pairs, all right, um, and uh, this one here, which is Aussie franc. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much uh, just before FOMC, and uh, most of them are doing very well, right? And the current running trades are also doing well. So all in all, right, if you take a look at the activities, right, um, that's about. About three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars Aussie dollars in profit, um, including the running profit. Okay, I do not know what's the outcome of this running trade. It could be that um, it's going to end up into negative zone, all right? But anyway, I shifted the core winners into break even already. Um, so in this video, I'm just trying to say that there is really no point to avoid um, key high impact news because then it happens every time. Right, more important is to have a consistent way of finding your trades. That means that you have to get comfortable with the method. Um, you have to also uh, get used to that volatility that's going to come. But more important is that have a trade plan. Uh, and I definitely encourage diversification. Because myself, I'm also into stocks. Um, whether it's Singapore stocks, Hong Kong stocks. Uh, I have also a um, basket of income uh, Assets, right? That includes REITs and bonds and unit trust that pays dividends. All right, but I also engage in really high risk, high volatility activities such such as uh, trading into the forex or commodities or indexes. Uh, so it's like this is my basket. But more important is that uh, we need to have the quality trade. Okay, meaning that we need to find these trades in a way. That is healthy to us. It's not um, at the at the uh, expense of our health or our lifestyle. All right. So I rely a lot on automations. Automations means that these trades are being pushed to me, and once they are pushed to me, I just have to do one thing. All right. Do a quick screening and then just put in the trade. Okay. Uh, so I hope that this video is uh, useful to all of you because then to give you a bit of insight of how I'm trading.